Hi guys, welcome to the vlog. So this week was pretty eventful and I used a green screen for the first time in one of the projects. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I learned being directed through Zoom and using a green screen. I'm gonna give you a recap and then I'm gonna tell you a few things that I learned about using a green screen for the first time. And if you guys have used green screen for a long time, I would love any tips. I haven't edited the green screen things it's going to be edited by somebody else but i would love to use green screens in the future for you know projects that i do so i am working on a short with a friend um because i just hit him up and i was like hey we um i would love to do something let me know if there's something that you've been wanting to do because i'm getting footage for my reel um gathered like an updated reel so we had a meeting on monday about the story i'm helping um the storyline a bit you know, with the ideas, writing. He's gonna do primarily all of the writing, but I'm gonna give him some notes, some ideas. And on Tuesday, uh, my agency asked me to do a self-tape audition for a commercial. And these are my favorite, but also if I don't immediately have something that I'm excited about, I'm like, I don't know what to say. It was a commercial audition where they ask you a question or ask you to act something else and improv some lines. For this one, they asked for a full body slate and they allowed for vertical. So I'm gonna show you guys that slate and the audition completely. Um, because I ended up using my first take. So I did about five or six different takes, but this one felt the most honest to me. The template essentially was, pretend you're talking to yourself, uh, but it's yourself from the past, from February, 2020. And so what would you tell them to go do? You know, are you gonna ask them to go buy something or go do something? So this first take is the take I ended up using because it was really honest and I, honestly started crying because it was so sad. And when I did feel those feelings coming in, I just allowed them uh, because it was an honest, you know, opinion. So let me show you guys that audition. Hi, my name is Belgica Rodriguez and I'm with MDT. <sighs> hey, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, don't panic. It's gonna be okay. I just need you to go buy a few things right now, as soon as this call is done. So write these down. I can text these to you, but uh, go buy these and then stay home, okay? So first thing, active yeast to make bread. Um, flour, if you go to Costco, there's a huge bag for $5. Uh, a gallon of bleach, lots of hand sanitizer, toilet paper, just don't get too much, just get one big pack. Uh, a ring light for online meetings, uh, download Zoom, and stock up on groceries, mostly non-perishables, just grab some perishables that are last you for a couple of weeks. And in general, stuff that'll keep you busy, puzzles, weights, maybe some new strings for the guitar, um, reusable face masks, a few of those. And, uh, Buy some Amazon stock, as much as you can afford. And then be open to change, but also to do the same thing every day. So um, meditate, do yoga, relax, call your friends, hang out with them um, tonight. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. I still haven't heard back from them, so I don't know if I got cast in this, but um, yeah, that's with the audition that my agency sent me this week. They didn't send me anything else this week. And then on Tuesday evening, I did a rehearsal. I just finished a rehearsal for the short film I'm going to be doing in the first week of April with the lead singer of the band and we just went over a few things that I could do to practice uh, before the shoot date because, you know, I'm not such a great singer. But he's also going to send me the second song because I'm doing two songs. One of them I'm actually performing live, which is a little crazy to even think about that I'm going to be singing live backups, but still. Uh, so I'm going to be practicing that and be referring to my boyfriend to make sure that I'm doing it correctly because he's a lot more musically inclined than I am. And then he, uh, Harley, 
who is the lead singer of this band, is also going to send me the second song that I'm going to be lip syncing. So I have to memorize that as well to and practice lip syncing so that it looks real. And then Wednesday was a very busy day. So Wednesday was the day where I filmed this. I've been working with the Academy of Art in San Francisco quite a bit the last few weeks. And for this one, um, we did a Zoom audition and they booked me, I think, within a couple of days of that. And if you do get booked for this specific project for the Academy of Art, where they are filming at home, so they ask you if you have things to record essential things. So it's an app that they like, um, some kind of microphone to attach to your phone and a green screen and a, green, a ring light, which I had everything. So I didn't have to, you know, ask them to send me anything or go pick it up. Shot nine, take one. Shot nine, take two. Shot five, take two. So can you call it uh, eight? Shot five. This is a rehearsal. Well, we'll we still want to have it in the uh, the camera. Eight. Report. You said eight. Shot five. So, uh, shot five. Take one. Okay. Let me I am so tired. We just finished filming. We actually finished what, like twenty minutes um, ahead of schedule. Took a five minute break, but from 9 a.m. all the way till right now, I just got off the call. We worked on the scene. The green screen was giving me a little bit of an issue, but really it only took one hour to shoot my side of things. And then the rest of the time we were talking or shooting the other side, the other character that's in the scene. But I am so exhausted. I didn't have breakfast. I mean, I usually don't have breakfast, but today I'm feeling like a little sick. Maybe I'm just dehydrated. I just feel a little groggy and ugh. But um, I am exhausted from doing that. So I'm going to drink some coffee, have some food, and then do a little bit of work. And tonight, um, some of my actor friends, they uh, organized a call so that we could all talk about acting related things. And so I have that call with them today at five. Um, so, you know, I have like four hours to do other work, clean up because it is, a mess in here with the green screen and I put a bunch of blankets and jackets down to try and make the audio better but I need to send those files have some food do some work I'm so tired I might take a nap So as you can tell, I was very exhausted, but um, yes, yeah, so I used a green screen and I actually ended up doing it in my living room, even though it's a lot more echoey because I have carpet in here over there. I only have a rug and then hardwood floors, but I did it over there because I needed to have my computer set up so that they could direct me through Zoom and tell me, you know, where to move the camera. We were sh screen sharing. So I was on my computer, I was on Zoom, and then on my phone, I was screen sharing with them. So essentially you saw two windows on the Zoom call that had me, one through my computer and then one through my phone. So they could see everything that was going on in my phone, made sure that all of the settings were correct, that um, the framing was correct. So I'm sure it was so much more frustrating for the director than it was for me because she had to say, hey, um, okay, like down, pan down a little bit or bring it lower, but don't pan down or a little bit this way or your green screen is splitting, it's falling, whatever. And that's something that I learned that this, these tripods that I have right now, my backdrop on, they're fine if you're not going to touch it at all, but they're pretty flimsy. I think they were around $30 to put a green screen on. So let me tell you about the green screens I have in case you also are going to need this in the future or are interested in a green screen. This one, I know my boyfriend bought a while ago from Amazon and it's okay. I threw it in the dryer to get rid of the wrinkles and so it's pretty good, but um it doesn't have anywhere to, it, it, it's not like a curtain. So it doesn't have anywhere to put the the rod through so that it just stays up. You would have to clamp it. And of course, when you clamp it, there's always a little bit of, you know, wrinkle. And I was trying my best to not have any wrinkles. So it would be easier for the editor. So this one I don't like just because it's not as easy to hang and also gets wrinkly, wrinkles a lot easier. So this other one, I actually just searched a local camera store and they had like wrinkle resistant fabric, which it's still a little wrinkly, but when you throw it in the dryer, it does 
you know, it does take it off significantly. This one is also a lot bigger. So the reason why I even thought about buying another one was because I didn't like how this hung and it was too short. So I couldn't have this completely behind me and stand on it. Of course, they're going to have to edit around my feet as well um, because I'm playing like a 10 inch uh, fitness influencer that lives on somebody's desk. But uh, so I needed to have green screen under my feet. So I searched for a local camera store and I found this one. It's five by nine feet. So it's definitely long enough so that I can stand on it and it can still be behind me. I could have benefited from it being even longer because I am pretty tall and I was doing a little bit of, you know, moving around. So I would have benefited from it being maybe 12 to 15 feet. But anyways, this was only with taxes. It was around $32, $33. And it has this hole like a curtain would. It is essentially a green curtain so that I just set it up on those tripods and put the rod through here and then it hung. So this was a pretty good um, solution if it's a scene where I'm not going to be moving too much, but I am considering returning this one and getting maybe one that's a little bit bigger. I'm not sure. I, I don't know how much I will be using green screens in the future, so I don't even know if it's worth it, you know, to buy more. But what I did was I set up this one on the chair, clamped it, and then I also put this one up because there was a scene where I had to drop a tripod on purpose. Um, so I didn't have enough green screen for that. Uh, so that's why I had to put the two together. Um, so I, I would say if you are going to use a green screen like this and there's anything in the way, just get rid of it ahead of time for me. I thought with the shots they were going to take, I thought it was going to be good enough to have the backdrops there, but it turned out that I had to put them more towards the back and stuff was falling. So it was very frustrating. I, if one more person would have been home, like my boyfriend, to help me move everything and it wouldn't, you know, fall so many times, that would have been really helpful. But it is really frustrating to film at home. So if you sign up for something like this, please be patient with everybody, including yourself, and test it out the night before. I did test this out in my living room the night before, but I thought, oh, okay, I set it up, so it's good. But then, you know, things change or you didn't do it right. You didn't do it as you thought it was going to be needed. So you have to move stuff. So my my fault was that I left my rug there and then I was stepping on my rug and then stepping on this. So whenever obviously you step on green screen or anything on fabric, it's, you know, you're wrinkling it because you're stepping on it. So there's just, I, w I wish I would have cleared out that rug and then used this on hardwood floors because it would have been a lot less wrinkly. Having tape handy also would have been nice because I could have taped this down to the floor so it didn't move around because it was moving around so much. So it wasn't so bad, but now I know what to expect in the future. And I know that the director for this specific short had done it already once and she had already, you know, expected that this was going to be complicated because she's you know, just telling people through the screen, hey, move it this way, that way, you're right, my right. Um, but she was really, really great in, in keeping the mood positive and keeping us working towards, you know, our goal of getting those shots. So we were able to finish it and I'm excited to get see the final results. I think we're going to get a copy in about three weeks. Their project is due. Um, their first cut, I think, is due next week. And then a few weeks later, they're going to screen it within that class. And so maybe I'll work with them again in the future because, of course, if I'm not already, you know, doing something else, I love doing these projects with students because I'm getting to know new filmmakers, writers, producers that are in school right now and will eventually do that professionally. And they're different artists that I might work with anyway in the future. That's it for today's vlog. Thank you so much for watching. At the end of every video, I feature another channel. This is today's feature. If you would like to be featured on my next video, make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and leave me a comment.